hello another live video i thought that i would let you come along with me while i'm just gonna work a little bit on a travel journal and i thought i may as well have some company right so i'm going to flick the camera around ta-da pop it over head like so and the journal that i'm working in is one that I had in Italy with me. Hi guys, I've got some little hellos there. And uh, I th this is part of uh, what I'm teaching in my Journal de Voyage uh, workshop that I've got coming up. And that you can online workshop. And this is the type of journaling I do. So there's photographs, but there's a lot of whimsical stuff happening. But a lot of what's going on so when I look at it, it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't look like a normal travel journal. I mean, that does not look like a normal travel journal. But when I look at it, I remember where I got the little papers from. I remember who gave them to me. I remember being in um, a flea market in Rome and finding this stenography paper that's in this collage. I remember doing the demonstration when I was drawing this because this was actually at an escape artist retreat. And, you know, just there's lots and lots of memory. So even though it's like a journal page, it does have more than that. I've got my travel sketching in here. Um, and I play a lot with, you know, different materials. You know, if I've found something that I've bought while I'm overseas, you know, that um, pops up in my journals too. And I leave gaps, I leave spaces, nothing's perfect. A little bit of just personal memory keeping um, you know, I travel with a little tiny printer, I draw little maps and what I wanted to work on, what I felt like work on, um, is <laughs> a part of my trip uh, when I went there last year to Italy to teach. Uh, we went to this incredible place uh, in Bramasol, it's the Sacro Bosco, it's a sacred woods um, it's a sculpture garden from the 15th century. Or was it the 16th century and it's from the 1500s? Anyway, it's very old. It was all hidden. It's been rediscovered. And there are these giant gargoyles and amazing sculptures that knights and their ladies used to wander around in. And I just felt like doing a little bit of watercolour and that sort of thing in here. So I have this handmade journal and I've got my uh, little um, aqua pastels and I wanted to add a little bit of colour. So I call this Apre journaling. So very often this is a little sketch of the town. I'm not saying I'm the best travel sketcher in the whole world but what I can tell you is it that burns the scene into my mind. So again travel journaling is for you, not anyone else. <laughs> Um, it's about that, you know, bringing the memories and the good times of a trip back. Uh, so what I've just done there, I should tell you, is I've just put a little bit of water on my um, aqua pastels just to get them extra super activated. And I'm going to just add colour uh, with them like this. I can scribble with them, of course, but I just want to use them like this at the moment. I might get a bit more of this blue and of course this is watercolour paper so I can add lots of water to it and it won't do anything. Um, on my last trip I took my journal, one of the Jane Davenport Mixed Media ones, they're great too. It's just this one I had a handmade journal because it's made from this fantastic old book and a friend of mine, uh, Susan, actually um, turned it into a journal with fancy paper in it <laughs> with the Fabriano paper so just letting that dry for a bit I'm just looking for a little bit of paper towel hoping I'm quick enough uh, just I'm just dabbing out just to give it some little clouds in that background I want to add a little so I've put that little bit of the blue across a little bit of the blue so that's a color called da Vinci which is sort of like a Prussian jadeish kind of blue and I don't really want to go bright, bright green. I can have a little tiny bit because it wasn't those colours. And, of course, the further away it was in time, 
hard it is to actually remember uh, really what the colours were, but does it matter? Not really. I do remember that these were sort of a an ochre colour, the, the, the buildings. So I just wanted to add a little bit of colour uh, like that, just super, super easy and just makes my journal, I don't know, makes me love it more. And I just, I felt like just working in it. I'm just going to add a bit more of that blue on that horizon. Uh, I might add a bit of the blue in the windows. So I'm t I feel like I'm standing in the field. This was after we'd been to this incredible sculpture garden. Angus and I were on a little bit of a high because we had no idea what to expect. It was a little bit of a drive to go and see this thing. We really, the brochure was from the 70s. It looked really daggy. And once we got there, it was amazing. It was one of those places you go and you think, why does no one know about this? Why every time someone says Italy, do they not tell you about this um, Sacrobosco? It's in a weird spot. There's not much else around, I guess. But Well, there's so much to see in Italy, I think that's the thing. So I've just added a little bit of colour there. But if I wanted to also draw with things, I think I've left space here to add some more photos and create a little collage congregation down here um and but i'm i feel like writing some text so i might grab one of my pens oh everything's been moved around because i'm filming this and that and i haven't got everything at my fingertips so i can't find my pen anyway so this is brahma so i don't like my text here so i've, I've just sort of scribbled that in obviously at some point but I just by doing that, by thick and thinning, that text, I can make it look much, much better. Like it's messy on purpose. Where if it's just got one pass of messy writing, I reckon it just looks messy. <laughs> and this is all personal. This is just my philosophy today, because I might change it tomorrow. Who knows? <laughs> So that's the name of the town. Yeah, I can add a little bit of something here, but what I wanted to do is add a little bit of uh, text. And I think I'll use my, um, what is my incredible pen? Yes, I might do this. Um, and I just wanted to write this up. Oh, I haven't got any ink in that one. Um, Okay, I might, I'm going to do it in this light blue. So this is one of the new mermaid markers in Lagoon. And I just want to put this. It's a Maya Angelou quote. Well, a quote is just something that she... Uh, I'm quoting her. just love writing with brush pens and I, this uh, sentiment. Sometimes I plan text out, sometimes I don't. Because this is for me, it's not, you know, like an artwork for the Louvre. So this might end up being a little bit of a shadow. I might do some other text on top. And just while that's drying, I might just do, do something else with this. I don't know what though. So weird doing this uh, live because I really, I don't know what I'm wanting to, but then again, that's why I wanted to just bring you along. Remembering I put some water on that, I quite like the look of that. To, like it's going from paint to <laughs> crayon, all in the one thing. Oh, I might, 
I'm just going to put oh, this color here. It's one of my favorite ones. So this is a color called Laurence and it's named after the French artist, Parisian artist, who I discovered when I was at the um, Tuileries. Is that it? The uh, the second. It's not a very famous museum. It's just probably the most my favorite one in Paris. But now I can't remember the name. And I want to put a bit of. I want to activate that with a bit of gesso. So I've put uh, that um, aquapastel down and I'm working on a sticker so I don't know how this will handle it but I oh, know it's all good. I've got, I might need a bit more colour actually. I might add in a little bit of strength there. I'm just going to jump up make sure I'm on camera. Yes. So I'm sort of building up a little bit of a skin tone for a face but and adding gesso to activate the paint instead of um, water I end up with a pastel version rather than a lighter version so if I add water to it I end up with a more translucent version this will make it opaque I can paint I can just add a bit more of this on top of it but I might want to take that off there and I'm just it's a good way um, the little aqua pastel is a good way to learn how to mix skin colors so it's a little bit see-through down here but I think that'll be fine that might be her neck and eventually this might be her talking about it I don't know yet Ooh, who knows I don't know but I have to let that dry but I've got this nice little tinted skin colour and that sort of is matching in with this uh, colour that I've used up here. This is all a bit disparate, like it's just a bit too this, 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 I don't like all these different things, separate things. Um, this kind of art play where you don't have a, <laughs> a goal in mind, you just feel like doing something artistic um it's so good for you because you've got to you're facing challenges all the time and working out what to do now sometimes if I've done a little sketch or done something in a, a journal that I'm a bit worried um you know to of ruining or whatever I scan it just I've got a printer that scans as well and I just scan it now these are complementary colors so they're going to make a really nice neutral together I'm going to leave a little bit white I want the crayon to still be in there and again I don't really I'm not, I don't really have a plan here I don't know what this is going to be it might be terrible I can always just paint over all of it if I feel like it um, I'm still letting that dry but I can start thinking about what is going to be happening here and I was feeling pretty easy and breezy when I was there. So I'm going to, I already know what's going to happen here. I know exactly. I just decided right then and there. Say hello if you, so I know that everything's still working. But what I do need to do is separate out this from this. So I might um, put a little bit of, <laughs> we're here, um, and I've come on at a weird time of the day, it suits me, but <laughs> not many, most of the rest of the world is awake at the moment. So I'm just putting a bit of gesso around this, I might need to uh, thicken that up a little. Um, I could even use one of my other colours, but I'm just going to use the gesso. I go through tons of my gesso. It's just a good uh, consistency. I like it, obviously, because <laughs> it's been made for me. Uh, yeah, so what else have I shown you? Just well, I've got to let that kind of dry while we're waiting. This will probably get cover covered up. And in fact, I'm just going to go over and cover it now. It will still come through because it's mermaid marker and the gesso isn't super opaque. So that it's a bit more forgiving 
uh, but it will just uh, knock it back a little bit um, but mermaid marker is very vibrant just like a mermaid and that will keep on coming up through the gesso so and eventually it'll stop but it's hard to tame um, so this is Oh, so what else was I using? They're the new mermaid brush the, with the little contours. And, well, why not? Because they're just right there. And they kind of look a bit, sometimes when you put a bit of a texture in uh, gesso or in paint at the time, you're like, oh, it sort of stands out. By the time it dries, it doesn't. It sort of softens off and does all nice things. And it's cool as. It's super cool. So I'm going to paint her hair. I might use this rusty sort of colour. So this is one of the new uh, paints. And this is from the metallic as well. So I might let this mix in. So she's going to be have an auburn hair. I don't know who she is. I don't know why she is in Bramasol. She's in my mind. That's what's happening. <gasps> oh, look at this colour. So this colour you can use for skin, especially if you mix with gesso. I mean, no one is that well. Some people are actually that orange, aren't they? Uh, you know, a sun tanning incident, sun tan bed or fake sun tan <laughs> incident. So I've got this hair flying up. I call this Jane hair because yeah, me likey. And I'm just, it's just all loose at the moment. I can always paint over anything that I feel isn't quite working. And I want to take it all the way to the edge of the page. Like a dirt. I might just give it a little bit here. Oh, I don't know who she is. Well, I was talking about the lords and their ladies that would you know, walk around. And they've made the um, some of the statues that are in the park. Like, look how many there are, and they're huge, as in like a you know massive two-story buildings. I mean, for a statue, that's pretty big from the 1500s. Um, and uh, like giant dragons, a, an elephant, a giant elephant with a box on top where you could actually sit up there in the, in the days. Um, um, it's this amazing place and they made them very scary and at night time they would have been lit with you know torches so that the ladies would get all oh, and flutter into the knight's arms so it was sort of amorous uh, behaviour but it was all destroyed in the different wars all through the centuries and disappeared from record and um, was rediscovered by a farmer when he was cleaning, clearing the field. And it was all going to be sold off, sectioned up and sold off as a suburb. And the, um, it, there was an effort on behalf of the town and the people that um, had it. Uh, and they began to start putting it back together. And now it's this beautiful, amazing place you can go and visit, which I thoroughly recommend. So I've just been blithering on, just so I'm letting that dry. I could um, put a heat gun on it, but um, paint actually is better if you don't do that. It's better when it dries naturally. I think it softens it. But because of time, we will do that. Mind you, I'm just letting you sit with me. I'm not in a rush. I'm not doing a tutorial. I'm actually going to add a bit of texture in the hair there. I wonder if I've got enough paint on there to do a few strays. No, it's not wet enough. And then before you put that the, the back to bed, I would I'm just keep your little mermaid tail clean. Um, so I think that might be dry enough for me to write on. So these are some of my magic wands. Yeah, pencil just won't work on uh, wet paint. Sometimes I can get pen though. Uh, to work on it because I can keep a fountain pen I can keep clean I wouldn't use a ballpoint because that would gunk it up but I'm going to use one of my epic pens yeah it's too wet I just won't I'm playing with fire here but when has that ever stopped me so this is shark's eye it's one of the new mermaid 
markers and I must have been dancing around and shaking it so I can see that the brush was a bit juicy actually I'm not going to use black uh, I'm going to use the dark grey so this is stormy seas so I just check that make sure it's not too juicy and I'm just going to pop the eyes in because this is a brush actually um, I want to turn I want to turn her I want to do it like this I decided I don't want her to be facing front on I was thinking how nice the color is <laughs> I wasn't concentrating on what I was doing that's pretty funny uh, I've been drawing Frida's all week so heavy brows are what I am finding attractive and the eyes tell me if this is more of a whimsical drawing or if it's a bit more realistic because I've got quite a few different styles I think you can I feel like you can recognize my work but I do have a few different styles and sometimes I don't know what what style is going to come out <laughs> until I start and it's really to do with the eyes So that's starting to get a bit heavy so I'm just going to dab that off and it's sort of just stained the wet just the wet paint so that's the gesso and the so if you want to learn any of this if you've never done anything with me and you've just randomly found me <laughs> uh, I teach um, people how to draw and paint I've got a best-selling book which you can look up on Amazon called drawing and painting beautiful faces and I also have online workshops I'm gonna put a bit of white paint pen in there I might even bring my camera down every so often I just jump up just to check oh sorry it's wiggling around that book is to die for yes. <laughs> Um, and the workshop that I've got starting very soon on the 9th is Journal de Voyage. Uh, before I started doing things, I wrote that out. I was practicing with my pens. Uh, so you can look that up on janedavenport.com. And that's where I'm showing you how I do this sort of travel journaling. But the videos are edited. They're not so rambly as this. <laughs> So this isn't the perfect example of what I'm capable of, uh, but you can get an idea that I'm a person of all person, I guess. <laughs> and for those of you that are very sharp of eye, you would re notice that I'm using new uh, paint pens. Now, I normally store them tip up so they're ready to rock and roll, and these ones have been up the wrong way. So sometimes with these, just give them a little whack 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 and I've picked this green green eyes which are the rarest eye color um, I've picked that because um, I felt like it no because it was a nice contrast with this but I'm going to turquoise her hair her eyes up a little I'm going to add I'm using the paint over pens so this one here needs a little TLC. Jane, you've been very messy. And again, there we go. It's just to activate it. The ink, you know, has gone down here because I haven't used them for a little bit. And let's put some in the eyes there and this is a new color so all of my um, oh, this one needs to be activated too all of my new uh, art supplies come out October 20 but if you go into uh, this is at Michael stores and then the rest of the world on the 20th and on my website I've got a limited quantity of all of the things and the paint pens will be adding tomorrow hopefully we're just waiting for them to arrive oh same thing so I do have a video of the shy unicorn 
so I'm just tapping it I'm just getting the ink that is the, the pigment is heavier in these I'm just getting that ink to flow down the bottom oh this one needs a bit more convincing it's so funny I took all my supplies that I've been using all the time up into a different oh there we go spot and these ones just haven't they're just sleeping that's all so these are my paint over pens I'm just adding a little bit of things there and all the time that's drying and if I wanted to soften this out even though that's a, more like an acrylic paint I can still before it dries I can soften it up a little, get it a bit smudgier, but I could also use, uh, this is a really nice new colour called Seashell, in the Mermaid Markers. And this will dry a lot lighter, because I'm on the gesso, it'll soften, see how the other colours really softened? It will soften as well, it won't be that bright orange like it looks now but I kind of like crazy bright cheeks too I think they're fun, fun. and oh my gosh I've been on here for 20 minutes already that's crazy well I better let you go this is uh, I was just I just I just started mucking around and you can join my workshop Jane at janedovenport.com journal de voyage and come and join our cool group of amazing people going to be a very well it has been a very popular class already and um i think i managed to get a bit of paint in my pen i'm just going to go and give that a little uh, tlc and i will at some point i'll probably put her on instagram and because this is all still wet um I know that this this pigment type brush I can get some uh, darkness happening oh I think she might have a little beauty mark she might have some amazing earrings because she's an Italian princess yes 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 so I thank you for joining me <laughs> and uh, I hope to see you in the in the school bye <laughs> keep going <laughs> well it's been 28 minutes already that's crazy that went really quick She's kind of cute, right? I like her and I love the copper and the brown paint together. Mm -mm -mm. And that was the pastels. <laughs>